Greetings BUSN 1360 Software Apps for Business. So we're completing our study of Word. You've done the four chapters, you know, Word 1, 2, 3, and 4, and now you get a chance to really demonstrate what you know through the Module 1 Word Critical Thinking Capstone. I hope that you've already watched the short video that I made for you that's an overview of this assignment. If so, one of the things that you know is that there's two pieces to this one assignment and those two pieces include the grader, which is what I'm going to go through in this video. And once you pass the grader, the second part of the assignment will be open to you, and that is the quiz. And the questions in the quiz are going to ask you about things that you did during the grader. So first of all, hopefully you see this as kind of a win-win because as you've completed the grader, you're going to be you know, familiar with what was in the grader and you're going to be able to answer those quiz questions. So what I'm I'm going to focus on and walk you through is part one of the assignment, which is the grader. So let's get started. This is my IT lab. I've gone to course materials and I've opened module one word critical thinking capstone. And as you can see, there's only one assignment that is listed. When I click this, I'm going to see the two pieces of the assignment. One piece that is in a darkened font, which is Word Introductory Capstone Assessment Research, and then the other, which is currently grayed out because it says Word Introductory Capstone Critical Thinking Quiz. Okay, so the quiz is the second part to the assignment. Now, if you watched the preliminary video I did, the overview video, then you'll know that I uploaded just the document that was downloaded, the work document, with no changes whatsoever. And <laughs> amazingly, I earned 3% just for submitting the document as is. But in that one attempt, my IT lab tells me that was not passed and so the quiz is not yet available and that's okay. I'm going to click just to open that up and you recognize this I'm sure as just a, a grader. I mean it is the same thing that we do for all the chapter graders where we download our materials. You can preview the steps online if you like. Then you upload your file and finally submit it. Right. Okay, well, I've taken the liberty of already doing that as I typically do. I've put my files into a folder that I created called Word Capstone. You can see that there's four files here and um, I've gone ahead and opened this is the instruction file and I, I did demonstrate this in the um, earlier overview video. It's going to be just a little bit longer. I'm just scrolling down quickly here. 26 steps we're just going to take those steps one at a time. And I have gone ahead and opened the actual work document. Recall that my pretend student name is Betty Baker, and so I'm looking for the file that begins with my last name. And my IT lab appended that automatically onto the file. So this is our working document. And I'm up here at the top. So let's get started. We've completed the first step. On to the second step, it says apply the slice. Let me make this a little larger. Apply the slice document theme, select all the text in the document, and change the font to Bookman Old Style. Change the font size to 12, adjust the right and left margins to one and a half inch. So lots of steps here, which is why, as usual, I printed my steps and I like to refer to those. So I'm just going to keep those here to my side. So let's go back to the document. And the first thing it said is to apply the slice document theme. If I go under design, I see all my themes. Let's see if I can locate slice. Oh, there it is. I thought they would be in alphabetical order. Uh, it looks like they are not. But for me, slice is about uh, third down on the left side. So I'm going to click that. And you can already see as I hover over that it's previewing it for me. But I need to actually click 
on Slice for that to be applied. And so it looks like I have some fonts and other things that were automatically implemented. It says select all the text in the document and change the font to Bookman Old Style. Well, if you've watched in previous videos that I've done, I love to give you keyboard uh, command shortcuts. And so Control A is hopefully automatic to you now. That selects all, Control A. And we're going to change that and when I click in the font it's empty because there are font styles here that are different so it doesn't know which of those to display in that little text box so it just leaves it empty because there's differences that's a little tip for you to know I'm gonna just type I could pick it out of the drop-down box but I can just type bookman and you see it's already appearing there so I'm gonna tab to accept it and you see that my font has updated bookman old style I hope one of the benefits you get um, from watching these videos is some uh, shortcut techniques. It also wanted the font size to change to 12, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Adjust the right and left margins to one and a half inch. Now it did not say top, it did just say right and left. So I'm going to go to layout and uh, margins, and I'm going to go ahead and go to custom and it looks like the top and bottom are at a half inch and I'm just gonna click in here delete the zero uh, before the 0.5 for left I'm gonna make that same edit for right tabbing out just to make sure it sets up and so we've adjusted the right and left margins and I'm gonna click OK whenever I think I've done something that looks correct and as I look at my ruler bar that does look to be about one and a half inches on both sides I'm going to go ahead and save and of course we saw the font changes and all and let's go back to the next step in our instructions step three insert a header and then select edit header type atoms in the left section of the header insert a right aligned page number selecting the plain number and then close the header I want you to recall from previous uh, exercises and videos that we have to learn to speak in the language of word and this particular instruction is not in the language of word and I know that because it's telling me to type something in the header and then to pick one of the um, pre-formatted word styles for page numbers and that means it would wipe out the text I had just typed and replace it with that pre-formatted um, styling. So I just simply need to make that translation in my mind that I need to first insert that page number and then go back and type the name in. So let's go back to our document. And again, something that you may recall is that a fast way to go into the header uh, is to double click in that uh, area of the ruler bar that is currently grayed out. Once there, let me just make sure uh, I do need to insert my page number. So page number, and it wanted that page number right aligned. So I'm at the top. Here's, here are my plain styles, and this one is the one that is right aligned. Now that that's in there, what I can do is I can backspace, backspace. That deletes. I'm going to type in that name Adams and then I'm going to tab tab to put that page number back over there on the right hand side and I'm going to close the header. I'm going to return to my instructions. Let's just double check we inserted a header, we inserted Adams in the left section of the header, we inserted a right aligned page number and we closed the header. Here on step four, it says insert a manual page break before the second paragraph of the second page, beginning with on behalf of the faculty and staff. Let's return to our document. We were to go to the second paragraph on the second page. And just to be clear, they did explain that that meant on behalf of the faculty and staff right and so insert a manual page break before that second paragraph so I'm gonna click 
immediately before it and so you see my cursor is flashing in that area and you may recall I've demonstrated this in previous videos that to insert a manual page break the keyboard command is control enter you see that it pushed that paragraph onto the next page and if I scroll back up I can see my non-printable characters this page break. I'm going to save that and return to my instructions and just in double check it looks good. Step 5 select all text that displays before the newly inserted page break and double space the selected text. Remove any paragraph spacing from the selected text. So let's return to our document. We see our page break and of course what you can do is simply click before the page break and press and drag. You could also click scroll up, hold your shift key down and click, you know, as long as you have those starting and ending points, but dragging in this case works out well. And they wanted us to double space. So in my paragraph grouping on the home tab, click and here's double space. They did however specify to remove any paragraph spacing and that's the before and after. So the same place we applied double spacing we want to remove space before paragraph click that again remove space after and save I'm going to return to my instructions I always just double check to make sure and even then sometimes I overlook something step 6 move to the beginning of the document and press enter Remove the first line indent from the newly inserted paragraph. At the new paragraph, type statement of purpose and apply bold, bold formatting to the title, center the title. So I'm going to return to the document. And they instructed us to click here at the beginning. If you weren't sure to get to the beginning, do you remember Control Home? will always take your uh, cursor to the very top, your insertion point. So I did that and press enter. So I'm going to press enter. Now they then tell us to remove the first line indent and I want to just very briefly again point out see how this line is indented and I do have my non-printing characters displayed and you know from our previous studies that a tab, the keystroke tab, would appear if, if I had actually uh, if it had been typed. For example, up here in our header you can see that the tab key has been pressed twice. You can see that because of this arrow. Well, I don't see that arrow here and so I know that it is a first line indent which means up here on my ruler bar I can see that my settings, my little stops for uh, where the paragraph uh, begins that this one is moved over a half inch. I can see that and of course as I look at the new paragraph that was created it was modeled based on you know the paragraph that <laughs> that created it right because I was in that paragraph and I hit enter so it it um, absorbed the settings of that paragraph when it created the new one so as I look up here I can see that indent and it's telling me to remove that remove the first line indent from the new from the newly inserted paragraph so make sure your insertion point is on this new paragraph that you inserted and then you can go up to your ruler you have to get your pointer right inside that little tab and just drag it over now alternatively you can go to the menus uh, whatever way is more comfortable we've demonstrated that in previous videos um, at the new paragraph, type statement of purpose. So I make sure my cursor is here at this new paragraph, and I'm going to type statement of purpose. Oops, if I can type of purpose, make sure your spelling is good. Uh, it says and apply bold formatting to the title. So I'm going to remember if I move my mouse out here into the margin, see how it points towards that statement. Select bold and then I want to center 
There we go. Save. Let's return to the instructions. On to step 7. A footnote enables you to clarify or expound on a statement in the body of the document without cluttering the document with more text. Wow! All these other instructions have really been instructions, but now they're telling me something. They're giving me an explanation, not a command or an instruction to do something, but they're giving me an instruction, their information. I wonder if this could possibly be on the quiz later. I don't know that. I have not looked at the quiz yet, but I'm just putting on my thinking cap. Okay. Unlike a footer, a footnote only displays on the page in which it is cited. Now this is interesting. See this little character here? These are, just like you have a manual page break, these are uh, manual uh, breaks in the line. It's not a paragraph mark. They didn't hit enter. Um, so what did they hit? Shift enter. That creates a, a manual break. It forces a break at that particular section. Just a little FYI. Now here's the command. In the second paragraph on the first page, Place the insertion point after the period at the end of the sentence that ends with by the University of Arizona. Then we're going to insert a footnote with this text. Now I also in previous videos have shown you something. The first thing is remember we have to be very accurate when we type this and that's okay. You could just type it and you could be very accurate. But I can right click and copy but I don't want, oops, I don't want to paste, all, I'm sorry, all I did was right click and copy. I don't want to paste that into my document because if I do, all that formatting will come with it. The blue, the Arial 9 point font, all of that will then be applied and that's not what the instruction tells us to do. So instead, if you remember, you can go open up Notepad. All Microsoft computers come with this. It is a plain text editor. I'm sure the Mac has one too. You might want to look into WordPad. I can paste and see how it doesn't have the formatting? So then I can just select it, right click, copy, and now I can save myself that typing. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize that because now I can save myself that typing. But I still need to, you know, complete these steps so that I can paste this into the footnote. Return to our document. And step seven said that in the second paragraph on the first page, place the insertion point at the end of the sentence that ends with University of Arizona. So I can kind of scroll down here and hopefully it'll jump out to me. There it is. If not, I can use the search feature right in Word to find it. But here it says, as a student researcher, I was named finalist of the three minute uh, thesis competition sponsored by the University of Arizona. It says insert a footnote. Okay, place the insertion point after the period at the end of that sentence. So I'm going to click. I can see the space there. You know, so I know I'm I'm after the period, but before that space. There's my insertion point, and I'm going to insert a footnote. So we're probably talking about references, and insert footnote. Now you can see it's jumped to the bottom of the page. It's put that little bar up there. It's put a little footnote. And I already have copy and pasted the plain text of our instructions. And so you can control V as in victory. And that is a paste. And you see that it pasted that text exactly. Now, while I'm there, I'll just point out that it's in Century Gothic. And remember, they had us change the font of the paper. So, you know, of the body of the paper. So, might be some changes coming there to make that look a little more uniform. Okay, but we have that. So, I'm going to go ahead and save. And I'm going to return to my instructions. On to step eight. Modify the footnote style, right? We knew that was coming. Changing the font to Bookman Old Style and the font size to 12. We want our paper to look consistent. So let me return. And in the footnote, now 
here's going to be your temptation. I've explained this uh, in one of the previous graders. The temptation is to select that text and to just pop up here and change it. And indeed, for the purposes of appearances for that singular footnote, the font would be changed. But we want this to be changed for all footnotes, you know, past, present, and future, right? The, anything that's in that paper, we want it to have that font. So instead, what I'm going to do is just click anywhere in the footnote, right click. I am a big fan of right clicking because then I don't have to remember all the different menus especially as the software changes in in you know every about two years to three years the software is changing versions you won't have to find all those new menu items just right click go to style okay and now we're looking at notice it says footnote text is selected and I'm gonna click modify and uh, my, okay, here I am modifying, and they wanted us to change this formatting. Um, they want us to change that, what was it, to um, Bookman Old Style. Again, I'm just going to type it, and as soon as it finds the correct one, I can tab, and that accepts it. And they also want us to change that to 12-point font. And then I'm going to click on OK and look at it in the background here as I click the apply button and you see that it's changed and even up here it does confirm it but it would be a mistake to go to that and change it you have to go into the style so save that and let's return to the instructions on to step nine change the word sophomore in the first sentence uh, on the first page to student As an undergraduate sophomore, I'm going to double click to select that word. I'm going to type student. I like those steps. Those are easy steps. Step 10, insert a footer and type 2022 fall in the footer space. Change the footer font to Bookman Old Style and change the footer font size to 12. Close the footer. Now they in this case did not tell us to uh, pick a page number or anything like that so we are simply going to type 2022 fall. So let's return to our document. Here's the header that we created. Scroll down to the bottom of this first page. Now I have to be very careful. I do not want to affect my footnote which you see is in the body. See how it's in the white part of the ruler along with the rest of the text that's in the body? I want to make sure my mouse is aligned with this grayed part of the ruler. So I'm down here in kind of a null zone. When I'm there, here's the shortcut, double click Okay, now it's opened that footer and I can just simply type what they told me to which is 2022 fall. They also wanted us to change the footer font. Now I want to make sure I select everything so I can still kind of just pull my mouse over here to the margin to select that whole text. You notice I've got my uh, quick formatting bar here and that's fine. I'm going to type bookmen and it picks up already and I'm going to tab over and it did want 12 points so I'm going to type that and hit enter. So once the font is selected you tab, once your size is selected you press enter. These are shortcut tips. If you prefer to use the mouse certainly that is also correct. I'm just giving you some uh, shortcuts that hopefully if you are a little more comfortable allow you to improve your speed. Okay. Alright, let's see. Let's close that footer and let's go back to the instructions. Step 11, look how quickly we're moving through, but I do not want to get overconfident because I know they're going to put me through the test, right? Newsletters are often formatted in columns. Really? That does not sound like an instruction to me. It sounds like information on which I could potentially be quizzed. Newsletters are often formatted in columns. I'm doing my wink. Can you see me in the little Doing my wink? Okay. Newsletters are often formatted in color. We have to have fun. We just have to have fun. 
Newsletters are often formatted in columns, as is the one that is included in this document. By using section breaks, you can format each section independently of others. Select all the text on pages 4 and 5 and format it in two columns. Insert a continuous section break before the words on behalf of the faculty at the top of the fourth page. Lots of stuff going on here. So let's go back to our document. And it's said to go to the fourth page, for example. Here's page four. You see the page number there. You also can double check, which is sometimes really uh, something you need to look at down here in the lower left corner. It tells us page four. And because this is a lot of text to select, I'm going to click to put my insertion point to the left of the O without clicking or, or touching you know, anything on the keyboard or the computer. I'm going to scroll. I'm using the wheel on my mouse until I can see the bottom of page 5. This is the bottom. I'm going to hold my shift key down and with the shift key held down I'm going to click after the period in page. And again we recognize that as a way to very precisely select all that text. With all that selected it said uh, and format it in two columns. Now an interesting thing here is that we're not going to format the text above it in two columns. Only this text that we have selected. So I'm going to go to layout and under columns I'm going to pick two. Now I can see that my ruler has broken into two pieces and as I scroll up first of all this is one thing I want you to look at page break and then the computer inserted this section break continuous when I said I want this next part to be formatted differently. If I scroll to the very bottom there it inserted another section break saying only this part of the text will be formatted in that way. If I were to click after that in this paragraph, this may not look like it but it's after. Okay, and here's how I'll prove it to you. I'm going to click where it says majors and I'm going to use the arrow key on my keyboard because we know that that goes sequentially. And you see how that paragraph actually follows page? If you thought that that paragraph part uh, marker there was part of this column, you could check that by clicking someplace in that text and then arrowing. And as I arrow, you see how it says, no, the next part is at the top of the next column. So that can help me to see, to visualize uh, those changes. But those continuous section breaks define where that formatting is applied and it did not affect the formatting above those section breaks. Now interestingly enough, and I'm going to take them at their word, they continue. They say select all text on pages 4 and 5 and format it in two columns and we've done that. Now it says as part of step 11 insert a continuous section break before the words on behalf of the faculty. Insert a continuous page break before the words on behalf of the faculty. Now here's why that's a little confusing to me because the computer already did it but I'm assuming that they want another one and something I have learned over the years and I, I don't know what they're doing here yet you, if you have several section breaks, it does not hurt anything. What it does do is it creates more sections. And so sometimes if you have a lot of formatting, you have to make sure that you really are, are clicked. Your insertion point is in the section that you want to affect. Because remember, what is selected will be affected. So I have clicked before the, the O in on behalf of the faculty, and they asked me to insert another continuous section break. So I'm on the Layout tab, Break, and here's Continuous. And notice that you know you have all kinds. You can even control where those columns break. Sometimes that's very handy. Okay, so I inserted that one, but I also still have this other one up here. Okay, save that. And I think 
That is the end of the first page of instructions that finishes step 11. So I'm currently at 31 minutes into the video. This is a long set of instructions. So I'm going to stop here and make a separate section to this video. And uh, we'll pick back up in another video so that this is chunked a little bit for you into more manageable bites. See you in a minute.